Hey, welcome here, Tim the Blacksmith. So, yet again, we're back on the power hammer job here. So Nazel's all patched up, running good. Martin's just making noise here. Wrapping axes up. Hey, thanks to all of you who have purchased an axe. I've got some compression issues going on the front ram. I'm not quite sure what's going on actually. So we're gonna open it up and see, hopefully nothing too bad. Just a little tidying up some maintenance stuff and we'll be uh, up and running. Thanks for being here, super appreciate it. Let's get right into it. Whoa! That's really bad. Wow, what is going on? Is this a hammer issue or is this a motor issue? how bad that is. It's kind of, it's one of those things where I just didn't know what I had to do to take care of this hammer. You know, like that, that slop is so big. That's so bad. So that could be part of the reason. Yeah, we'll see. We'll open it up here. So I just pulled off the exhaust manifold here, this thing. Look what I found in here. It's full of junk. This is what goes straight into the valve and then into the machine. This is the intake and outtake. That is, what is that stuff? I'm just gonna grab a screwdriver. I'm not sure what that thing is there. Oh my goodness, what is that? Can you grab it there? Yeah, what is that? Hey, I'm gonna pull that out. It's a rock. Is it a rock? What? A rock. What? <laughs> what is going on? Why is there a rock in there? Is it like, like, did an animal come down the line? Like the, ex this goes outside. Do you think something climbed it? But why, like? No, I don't want something in the box with them. <clears throat> this rock has been in there for a long time. Must be. I don't know if I should be laughing or like seriously concerned why there's a rock in my power hammer. That's a rock. Okay, I don't know what's going on. That's very worrisome. Let's keep going. Definitely uh, one of my brightest moments in life, using this ratchet strapped around, wrapped around this thing to lift this thing up. Super sketchy. So this is the ram, this is the ring here, and uh, they've set it up, I've never seen this before, oh. that they're actually, there's a pin so that the ring can't continue to float, so this couldn't be going around and around or something like that. I know that's a huge gap, I know it's huge, but I'm almost sure that that would have been how it would have been from original. I have no complaints about this. This is looking really good. This is, this is fascinating that Beche has done it different than Nazel, where we had all that drama with the um, cushion plug and the pin and everything running true. The way they've done it is no rings and basically the, from roughly understanding it, not perfectly understanding it, the, as the ram comes up, it closes this gap off and then the air is forced through these ports and check valves to cushion it. And I think that's going to be a, a, a system that allows for a lot more wear and slop in the hammer to still perform well. So kudos to Beche. I think that's a good system. Wanted to take uh, two minutes and quickly talk about this jacket, this shirt I've been wearing for the last four months. You've seen it in every single video and some of you reached out, hey Tim, what's going on with that cool shirt or cool jacket? 
Well, here's the deal. So there's this company called Anion, which is in Vancouver here, close to me in Canada. I was sort of drawn to their philosophy, which is basically making things from recycled material, things that are headed to the landfill, designs that are made not to be a trend, but to last basically forever. Those are all things that sort of ticked boxes in my mind, sort of like you can kind of see the similarity of what I'm trying to do with the axes out of the old train rail, etc. So I reached out to Anion and said, hey, would you be interested in sending me some of your clothes? If I like it, I'll talk about it. So they said, sure. So today, I want to tell you that this is the best piece of clothing I've ever worn in my life. This thing is absolute nuts. So this is their modern melt and wool. I don't want to call it a jacket and I don't want to call it a shirt. This is the one trick pony. Apparently, melt and wool is the most durable and toughest wool types out there. It actually stops water from soaking through it. I, I cannot kid you. I, the first day I was so skeptical, it's pouring rain like it always does here at Abbotsford. Went outside, I was grinding for like 20 minutes, pouring rain, it came in, it's completely dry underneath. It's just crazy. It's such a cool fabric. Somebody's got a chainsaw going in the background, come on. I have not babied it, but I've also not like intentionally harmed it. I've, you know, grinding with an angle grinder, I'm not spraying the sparks directly at it. I'm kind of like, oh, I'll sidestep a little bit because I want this thing to last for 10 years, which is what people are boasting these things last for. Four and a half months, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this thing. It's crazy. And for some reason, it hides dirt super good. Is it a shirt? Is it a jacket? It's everything. I wear this thing to the shop all day. I wear it editing. I wear it at home. I wear it to town. I wear it to church. And everywhere, it fits into that environment. I will say, disclaimer, I wear a long sleeve t-shirt under it. I think you could be okay without, but I'm always a colder kind of a guy, so I just wear a long sleeve. Don't think twice about it. And if you use the code Timothy Dick at checkout, you're gonna get 20% off the Modern Melton Wool or their Melton Hat for the month of March. To those of you who have been wondering, that's the deal. And uh, let's get back to that power hammer. So we're gonna be trying to take out the guide plates now. All right, so we got it out, grungy and dirty. So here you can see the guides. There's four of them on this one, instead of the two like the nasal. And this is a rubber seal. And on nasal it was leather and there's two of them. I wish I had a new one of these because this thing bleeds oil like crazy. I got everything cleaned up here and uh, I'm totally blown away by how good everything looks. These guides, absolutely fantastic condition. I measured them with the veneer caliper and I couldn't see any indifference in uh, tapering sometimes if they're worn more on one side than the other, but we're gold. So what I'm gonna do is um, put these back in and then we'll put the ram in the assembly so I can measure the gap and then build up more shim stock. It does have <coughs> shim stock in it this thickness, so we'll increase that. Wow, look at the wear on that. I did not even see that. That's crazy. There she goes. A little bit of an interesting development. I just took these guides out and look what happened. One of the bolts snapped on me when I was taking it out. Now, did I over torque it when I put it in? Maybe, but I wasn't doing anything different than all of these guys. And so I'm just thinking that these bolts are fatigued. They're just old. What a great time to have this break now. Then when it's all back and running, you know, and then we got to pull this all apart just to do this job. So. I'm gonna quickly see if I can order some new bolts 
and then we'll put the new bolts in when it's done and then we don't have to worry about this biting us down the road, you know? This is the shim that was behind the guide and it's 11 thou. And so four thou more is 15 thou, which is what this piece is. So I can cut new shims and just put one shim behind it. And then this perfectly will fit all four on the sheet. It's like this was designed to happen. So that's really, really cool. So I'm just gonna lay this out and we'll cut it. So we just got this leather seal made up. It's gonna cure overnight. And then we'll uh, put it in and see how it all works. Here's what we're up against. So this is the original bolt and I've broken two of them now. Holds the guide. And apparently this is a really weird metric size. So I went to town to get one. Local store doesn't have metric bolts. Have this one here, which is a standard half inch bolt. That's fine, except for the problem is and I don't know why this is, this angle here on metric is 90 degrees, and this angle here on standard is 82 degrees. So, so stupid, right? Anyways, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the guides out, and I bought a countersink. We're gonna make the top bolts fit this one. I would have done all bolts, except I couldn't get the longer size because I didn't have it. So, we're gonna do a little bit of changing around, but I think it'll work out okay. So let's get those guides out. Okay, so I'm going to take the uh, leather seal off here that we set up yesterday. See how that all works out for us. So I got it all made up here. The leather seal is looking good. I did a bit of touch up work on it. It's still pretty thick, so I might have to take it down, but I'm going to soak it in oil and then get it in there and we'll try and play with it a little bit. I can't see anything that's noticeably wrong with the power hammer. I'm gonna start turning my attention to the electrical system. One of my thoughts right now is because we've had such a cold snap coming out to warmer days that maybe there's the possibility that some of my wires have come loose and we just have a bad connection. I'm gonna go through, chase that down, put it back together and see where things are at. Guys, check it out. First spot checked in. Look at that, melted up really bad really really bad so hopefully we can just tidy that up go through these we'll probably keep going down the line to make sure everything's good but that's going to be our issue for sure so we're ready to go we got the guides in got the leather seal in it's tight it's really tight but i'm hoping it's going to be good we want it that way so we're going to start putting this stuff back together yeah. Yeah.
All right, we got the hammer back together here, which is awesome. We're going to start it up. I'm just loading up the front cylinder with a whole bunch of oil so that when it starts up fresh, it has oil in it. Sweet, man. Just had it running for like two minutes. It's looking super, super good. Um, I just put a piece of wood in there, keep the ram up, and just pumped a bunch of oil in here so that it goes on the underside of the piston head with the rings so that there's a lot of oil sitting on the leather seal right now. And now we'll let this thing run. We're just gonna throw the exhaust on it though. Okay, here it comes. I'm getting motor issues still here. Like the, the motor just bogs down as I try to give it here and that could be because the seal's extra tight. I'm not convinced of that. So I'm gonna go through and check this again. day here and yesterday I spent all day with the hammer I have like super oiled it to soak that seal I went through every single connection point from the VFD to the hammer and made sure all those contacts are good and clean let's fire it up here and see how it works So this here is the VFD that runs the hammer. This one actually converts from single phase to three phase and runs it at the same time. It gives you what's happening on the motor, but we're gonna start it up and I'm gonna record this stuff now when it's cold. It kind of seems like when the hammer gets warm or the motor or VFD gets warm is when the issue starts to come. And so I'm gonna record that information now when it's cold and then when it's hot, just so we can see what's going on. So Martin's gonna fire this up. I'm gonna write it all down. Okay, so that's up to speed, pretty much. It's actually going a little bit fast. That's our motor current, motor torque, motor power. Hey, Martin, can you kick it into, so he's gonna kick the treadle on now. So that's now ready to go. The hammer's in full idle, but not being used. So current was 15.7 at just the back cylinder running. Motor power was 30%. Torque was about the same. And then when we got the back running, or sorry, when the front's running, but at idle, it went up to 60% torque and power, 24 amps. And then when it's running in the hardest position, which is just about uh, the dies kissing, but not quite, we we're up to 78% and 75% power and torque and 31 amps, which is basically the, the full load amps of the motor. So we're running it flat out, but it was running good. I didn't see that yesterday. so. Everything's looking really great right now. We're gonna let this thing warm up and then we'll see what happens. I'm gonna make some bottle openers. Let's see how it goes.
I cannot believe how much better that power hammer runs with the guides adjusted like that. Before I did those guides, I couldn't make the bottle openers because you couldn't control your top to it. It would just kick out all over the place. Now it's dead accurate. I'm totally shocked by how good that performs. It's still bogging down a little bit, which I don't know what's going on. Thinking about it more, the rings again, maybe in the rear cylinder. I'm gonna try a couple more experiments because that's the only thing I can figure out that's giving me the issue, which is super disappointing. But nevertheless, the hammer is usable. It's running a lot better. Anyways, thanks for watching. Super appreciate. Remember to check out Anion uh, and the Modern Melton Wool, 20% off the Modern Melton Wool and their Melton Hat for the month of March. Got pre-orders open on the 1919 Hatchet and the 1919 Hudson Bay. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and until then, keep the forge lit, eh? And please consider subscribing if you haven't. I haven't said that for months. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Over and out.